So this will be our introduction to polar graphing. So polar graphing, as you can see, is a way of graphing using distances and angles. It's different than what we're used to graphing on. What we've been graphing on for all of our algebra life up until this point is the Cartesian plane. It's a rectangular coordinate system. Uh, those are kind of the two most common names for it. But typically when we graph in the rectangular coordinate plane, you know, if we're going to graph 0.35, we go over 3, up 5, and there's our 0.3 comma 5. So in the polar coordinate, uh, in the polar grid, we're going to be graphing using distances and angles. And we'll look at a couple examples of, of what I mean by that. But basically, if you're familiar with the unit circle, it looks a lot like the unit circle. It just has a bunch of rings in it, and we'll, we'll kind of take a look at what that means for all those rings. But that's, uh, this is a completely different graphing system than the Cartesian plane that we're used to. So let's look at uh, this system, the polar grid, kind of understand it a little bit. Points in the polar coordinate system are listed as r, comma, theta. So r stands for the radius. And if we have a radius of 1, it's going to be this little mini circle inside here. So every time we go out, each concentric circle is going to be another radius. So like a radius of 6 would be out here. If I just count out from the center, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that radius is going to be 6. So everything on this blue circle is going to have the first value, the r value of 6. Everything on this black circle in here will have the first value of 1. So that this is how, uh, instead of x and y, it's going to be r and theta for this polar system. Let's look at a couple examples just to make sure we're on the same page here. Uh, what I'd encourage you to do is pause it and see if you can guess where a, b, and c would be located. And, uh, and then unpause it and make sure you're, you get it. So for a... We're going to go 5, 120. So typically with X and Y, you would go over and then up. What I usually do is I start with the degree. So I go out to 120. And if you notice, there's more lines than what we're used to on the unit circle. They go up by 15 degrees. This would be 15 degrees, 30 degrees, and so on. So here's 60, 90, 120 would be right there. And so this is 120 degrees, and then 5, so we're going to go out 5. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that point right there is going to be 5, 120, which typically we'll just write the letter if they give us a letter, so that point there is A. All right, let's look at negative 3, 5 pi over 6. So 5 pi over 6 is going to be at 150. This is going to be 5 pi over 6. And if you forgot how that works, if you remember, this is pi. And 5 pi over 6 is just the pi over 6 less than that. So it would be 30 degrees less than that. And so we got 5 pi over 6 and then negative 3. So how do we handle negative 3? Well, instead of going out 3 toward the 5 pi over 6, we go 3 away. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3. So this point right here in red, this is going to be point B. It's 5 pi over 6, and then we go 3 in the opposite direction. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then point C, we'll do in green. So this one, we go to negative 11 pi over 6. And so 11 pi over 6 would be right here. But that's positive 11 pi over 6. That's when we go around the circle counterclockwise. That would be 11 pi over 6. So what we're going to do instead is go around the circle clockwise. And that's going to get us to right here. This is going to be, instead of 30 degrees now, we're going to call it negative 11 pi over 6. So it's the same, what we call terminal angle, as 30 degrees is negative 11 pi over 6. So we're dealing with that essentially 30 degrees. And then we go negative 6, so we're going to go the opposite direction, 1 two, three, four, five, six, and that point right there, did I count right? One, two, three, four, yep, that's going to be C right there. All right, so pretty basic, you just find the angle, and then you go out how far away? 
with the radius, and you got your points. All right, so we're going to look at also graphing circles, and we're going to look at graphing lines in this coordinate system. So we're graphing circles in polar coordinates. Uh, it's a little bit different than what we're used to graphing in the Cartesian coordinate system. Uh, circles with center of 0, 0 have this equation right here, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. This is something you probably learned in like a, an algebra 2 or functions in trig class. You, you learned a circle equation. And so what this means is, uh, for our example here, we're going to have a center at 0, 0. And this 9 tells me that the radius is, we take the square root of that, so that's going to be 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out 3, up 3, left 3, and down 3. And then we'll just do our best circle there. Let's see if I can draw a nice circle. That looks pretty nice. And that's going to be our circle with this equation right here. So in the Cartesian coordinate system, this is how we do a circle with that. Uh, that's not as important as how do we do it in polar coordinates. So in polar coordinates, it's just r equals k. And I kind of alluded to this earlier. Uh, all you do is you say, well, what's the radius? And then you've got your circle. Now there is going to be, you know, as we get further advanced along the polar, you know, understanding polars a little better, we're going to be able to shift circles left, right, up, down, stuff like that. But for just now, if it's a r equals 4, we're going to go out 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And our circle is just going to have a radius of 4. And hopefully you can draw on the lines better than I can. Oh, my. That's pretty pathetic. Uh, anyway, so this is going to be a circle with a radius of 4. If I just make it fat enough, it'll look better. Great. All right, so circles are, are just are pretty simple. You just say it's an equation r equals 4. You go out 4, draw a circle. Boom, you're done. All right, uh, what about lines? So graphing in the Cartesian coordinate system, a lot of times we're familiar with the y equals mx plus b. Or there might be other forms, you know, this is called uh, slope-intercept form. More commonly in like an advanced math class, like a pre-calculus, we do y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. And this is called point-slope form. But there's a di bunch of different ways that you can write a line in the Cartesian coordinate system. Uh, in the polar coordinate system, lines are given in the form of just theta equals k. And so let's look at an example and figure out how we could write an equation for this line. So I've got a red line here. And the question is, what's the equation for this line in polar coordinates? So, you know, obviously pause it or think about it for a second. Where do you think that, what do you think we would say for this line? And so this is at 30 degrees or you could say pi over 6. And so every point on here, if I go out here, this point that I'm, I'll use a different color so it stands out a little better. This point right here is going to be uh, out, let's see, 2, comma, 30 degrees. This point out here is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be negative 5, because we're going the opposite direction, 30 degrees. So every point on here is going to have a theta value of 30 degrees. So the equation for this is just theta equals 30 degrees. Or you could say theta equals pi over 6, if you're talking in radian. And what I encourage you to think about, I'm not going to give you the answer to this, but what are some other, there's many, many different correct ways of writing this line equation. You don't have to use 30 degrees. You could use a different degree. And what do you think that might be? So think about that. Um, you should be able to come up with at least two more, if not a couple more than that, ways to write this red equation. So that's kind of it for the intro to polar graphing and polar coordinates. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about how do we find the distance between two points in the polar coordinate system?